खुफिया वीडियो देखने से पहले वीडियो को लाइक करें राहम टीवी चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें और बेल आइकन पर क्लिक करें शुक्रिया it's uh it's it's a purification a rectification of our hearts and our and our actions and and in 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 many many techniques have been, we have learned throughout this uh 14th workshop and many ways we could purify our hearts and and we prevented ourselves from certain actions that is prohibited and today i have have been given a topic which is lowering your gaze which in other words but nazri uh, how to protect yourself from it how to protect your eyes uh, allama qurtubi rahim uh, rahimullah mentions he says that the eyes are the gateways to your heart your eyes are the gateway to your heart is the biggest gateway to your heart there's many other gateways shaitan could get through and and he says the eyes are the biggest gateway to your heart if it wants to corrupt your heart it uses your eyes and if it wants to rectify if allah wants to rect wants to rectify your heart it uses your eyes and 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 comes in a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh an nadru min min saham min siham uh uh is it the nadr is one of the one of the one of the arrows one of the poisonous arrows of iblis uh min siham uh masmum and and he said he said man tarakaha whoever whoever removes his ev- uh, evil sight or he lowers his gaze from haram he said then what i do he said i change his iman and uh, his iman that he feels the sweetness of iman in his heart and once he removes his lowers his gaze from haram and he sees this temptation is there and but for the he said because of my makhafati he tarakahu min makhafati that he removes his gaze from haram uh because of uh uh because of my fear he said that i what i do in gift for him in this dunya that he feels the sweetness of iman in his heart and the sweetness of iman what is the sweetness of iman and is when uh, if, if it was asked to bilal radiyallahu an he said the tortures uh, the boulders put on his chest in a burning uh, desert and is at that moment everything seems like that he's being tortured is the only thing that was on my tongue and my heart was uh, in satisfaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the only thing that was coming out of my tongue was ahad and ahad and the sweetness that Allah was providing me the comfort that Allah was providing me outwardly it seemed like I was in torture but in he said he said that I want to go back to the same feeling again I wish I could stay in that state forever and ever again and 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 that is what the sweetness of iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides when uh, when person removes his eyesight away from uh, from haram i'll mention an incident that took place in the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we know we just finished from uh, from the month of zul hijjah and we into the uh, muharram and and we, uh, we went over hajj and many of our uh, our family members and friends are returning from hajj performing hajj and and they and they're coming back and given us gift of hajj and is it uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also performed his final hajj and as you know rasulullah when he was performing his final hajj hajjatul wada the finality and the only hajj that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had performed and he was he was the ornament and he was the chandelier in that hajj everyone was looking at rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam everything was being observed of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mounted on his camel and he's proceeding towards the pl- uh, plains of arafa and he and he's going to arafat on behind him on his ba- uh, on his back uh is uh, fazl bin abbas radiyallahu an who is the cousin of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the ali bayt and uh, son uh, 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 and the son of abbas radiyallahu an who's the uncle of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he's proceeding into arafa There's a young lady, young Sahabiya, she comes she mo- she comes forward uh, in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to uh, to ask some questions regarding the Hajj. And uh, more or less of the question was that she asked the crux of the question was that can uh, can I perform Hajj 
on behalf of my father since he's since he's uh, elderly and he's sick and he's not able to perform Hajj can I perform Hajj on, on his behalf but this was not the incident uh, that's not what we're getting into uh, and and this incident is uh, is narrated in many ahadi uh, many incident many of the uh, books of ahadith have narrated this uh, this incident so as she's asking the question Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam turns around and as I told you, everyone is observing every action of Rasulullah. And he turns around, Fadl, is a young, uh, Fadl bin Abbas is also a young man. And he takes his chin and he moves it to the, uh, force, force bully, uh, force bully moves it to the other side. And he conducts his conversation with this young Sahabiya. As he finished with the conversation, his, uh, his uncle had an objection which he had the right to ask. And he had this leniency that he could ask Rasulullah since he's the uncle and he's in the place of a father. And he, and he said, he said, Lawaita Unuk Ibn Ammik. He said that why you, you made him look bad that you turned his face away in front of the entire uh, entire uh, entire uh, public. Why did you have to do this? Why do you have to do this? And Rasulullah, he said, this is the answer that Rasulullah gave. That is, that is the lesson that we have to learn from. And this would be the lesson for the day of Qiyamah. And person who is in, who's in the field of, uh, of, of rectifying in Suluk and the Salik, and he has learned so many lessons from this incident. And he moved this, uh, his face away. He said, why did you have to do this? Rasulullah said, more or less. He said, if I have not done it, he said, shaitan would have come between them. Shaitan would have come between them, and and I'm just, what I'm reason I mentioned the incident about Arafah, the in Arafah, which du'as are being accepted, Hajj is uh, they say is considered of Arafat, and who is mounted onto the camel, no other per, uh, not any usual person like me and you is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and who's Fazl bin Abbas, he's one of the Ali Bayt, who is the direct cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And, and the greatest view that you ever could see and the greatest personality and his, his chest is touching the Mubarak back of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even at this moment Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying that if I have not turned his face away from that young Sahabiyah Shaitan would have come between them in, 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 in that such pure atmosphere and a such pure gathering and, and the performing Hajj and such, such pure uh, entities then no one can come close to the uh, to the dust of uh, dust of these individual of Fazl, of Fazl bin Abbas or the Sahabiya. But what Rasulullah is saying, he said, if I have not done it, Shaitan would have come between them. So just imagine how much how much protection we need from uh, 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 from protecting our eyes from uh, from the filth and from uh, 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 from the uh, prohibitions. And and, and this. <coughs> Ashraf Ali Ta'ani he mentions is that a person when he gets loose of his uh, eyesight when his eyesight is roaming everywhere and he said that he gets extreme punishments in this world and hereafter also to a point that he could lose his Iman and he mentioned many incidents uh, incident about, uh, about uh, uh, such punishment of people that happened to them and someone asked him, he said, uh, is, is, is Hazrat, why, does, why such punishment of this, uh, this eyesight? You know, just because of one, one uh, that he makes one mistake with his eyesight and such punishment that he has to go through, that he forgets Quran, that if he's a, if he's a Muslim, he dies without Iman. A mention of this incident of two brothers. He said, Abdul, uh, Abdullah bin... Uh, uh, Abdullah al uh, Musli uh, uh, Rahimullah was uh, he went for Hajj and he sees a youngster holding on to the Gilaf of Kaaba and only dua that he's making, Oh Allah, do not deprive me of Iman. He said, Do not deprive me of Iman, and he constantly crying and he constantly uh, chanting the same dua over and over. He said, I became curious that why is he constantly making the same dua? There's many other duas to make. So he approached this individual and he said that what is why you're making this such dua that you know we get we get it we have that we want to die with iman but such intensive way that you're making only dua that you're making and he said he said I, and he said since you're you seem like a pious person I'll let you know the incident reason why I'm making this dua he said I have two I had two brothers who were the muazzin 
of the of uh, of haram who were the muazzin of haram and they never missed it, the Hajj salah in uh, uh, ever for 30 to, uh, 20 to 30 years they never missed uh, missed it, the Hajj salah he said before they died they lifted the quran he said whatever is said into the quran is false and they passed away he said for this reason I make this dua that Allah do not deprive me of Iman that I die with Iman anything but do not uh, deprive me of Iman and he said but what is the sin what is the action that such pious individual and dying without Iman how is this possible how can this ins uh, how can this happen what is the action they have done and as you know they're living in uh, in uh, near Haram and he said they they used to glance their eyes onto not Mahram they used to look at haram, they used to look at uh, look at women even though they covered they used to stare at them he said that was a sin they used to commit and Allah deprived them of iman so for this reason just imagine us they in a they in an environment she's not she's not completely nude she has this, she has some kind of uh, scarf on and at even that just because he's, they're staring at that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deprived them of iman and he said, and he said, why does why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this? The, it was asked by Hazrat Faridani He said, this is from uh, this is from the ghayrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets provoked when a person commits this, this type of sin. And he gets provoked, and when he uh, when he gets provoked, and the punishment such that comes upon this person, the person cannot even handle those punishment that he gets uh, if he if he's into into uh, into religious acts. All his acts are washed away within seconds. So may Allah give us the ability to purify our hearts and purify our uh, uh, our eyes and our sights. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.